Here we have a problem of moment couples on a rigid body. And we're asked to find the resultant force and moment at point A due to the moment couples and also the reactions at A. So first of all, let's identify what we have here and determine what we mean by moment couples or review what we mean by moment couples. We have three moment couples. So a moment couple is nothing but a set of forces that are parallel but opposite. So these forces are equal and opposite and they're separated by a distance d. So here we can say that that force is parallel to that. In this case our moment anywhere on or off this rigid body, our moment due to that couple is simply equal to force times distance. Now we went through the derivation of this in class and we saw that we could apply uh, our sum of moments and determine uh, <coughs> a resultant moment at any location on the object or outside of the object and it would always work out to be equivalent to force times distance. So using that principle we can, once we have identified that we have three moment couples, we have this 10 kilonewton force acting to the right, and this one acting parallel, but to the left with the same magnitude, 8 acting up and 8 acting down there, and 5 and 5 acting on a 45 degree angle. We can use that information to quickly solve this problem without having to divert back to uh, some sort of equilibrium or sum of moments about a known point. The only challenge comes from determining, determining the distances between our moment couples. So um, <clears throat> we saw before that we can either work in terms of our vectors, so we have a 45 degree angle here and a force acting uh, up and this 45 degree angle and the force acting down. And they're separated by one meter in this direction and three meters in that direction. So it would be quite quick and simple to determine the perpendicular distance that's separating the two. Alternately, we can work in Cartesian coordinate systems. So in Fx and Fy forces. And then our distances are even simpler to determine. So let's do that. Let's work in terms of uh, all forces in X or Y systems. So first off, let's draw ourselves a free body diagram. And here we have simply a horizontal member, a vertical member, and a horizontal member. And then we have a series of forces that frame into that. Those forces are 10 kilonewtons and 10 kilonewtons. eight kilonewtons and eight kilonewtons making up the other half of a couple and let's give this a name let's call that F1 is equal to eight and we'll call this F2 is equal to ten and then we have our inclined forces well we're going to convert that into F3x and F3y and here we have F3y and F3x. And we know since there's a 45 degree angle involved, F3x and F3y will be of the same value. So F3x is equal to F3y is equal to F sine 45. So F3x is equal to F3y is equal to 5 sine 45, and that's equal to 3.536 newtons. So we'll write it right here, 3.5336 newtons is equal to F3x, and 3.536 newtons is equal to F3y. Once we have that, our next step is to get the distances in between the three, or now the four moment couples, if we consider our Cartesian 
force comp or force components for F3. So we recall that that our moment resultant is simply equal to the sum of force times distance. And this is going to be the case anywhere on this object. The resultant moment would be the same. But for argument's sake, since we're looking for the resultant about point A, we'll call it moment resultant about point A. And since we have the moment couples here, we can simply write F1 times D1 plus F2 D2 plus F3x D3x plus F4x d4x. Now let's look at what we would call positive and negative in these terms. To do that we'll have to go back to our free body diagram and we can say that the moment couple between F1, the 8 kilonewton forces, is attempting to impart a counterclockwise rotation on this rigid body. The moment couple between F2 forces is also trying to impart counterclockwise rotation. And the same with F3x. If we were to, say, pin this body about any location, let's say this point here, and apply F3x force, it would rotate it counterclockwise. The only force couple here that's attempting to rotate the system clockwise is F3y. So F3y is attempting to rotate it the opposite direction as the other couples. In other words, if we go back to our equation here, well, this should be F3y and this should be FD3y. Let me just rewrite this. The resultant moment at A is equal to force 1, D1. And this is rotating it counterclockwise, that's a positive value, plus force 2, D2 also rotating it counterclockwise, that's also positive, plus force 3x, d3x, and that's a positive rotation. And then in this case we'll actually subtract force 3y, d3y, because it's trying to rotate it in a negative direction. And now it's just a matter of determining our distances and plugging in our values. We have M, R, and A is equal to force 1, which is 8 kilonewtons, times 3 meters, rotating it that way, plus 10 kilonewtons times 3 meters, rotating it that way, plus 3.536 times 3, also rotating it that way, minus 3.536 times 2, rotating it that way. So let's take a look at where those distances came from. To do that, I suppose we might as well redraw our free body diagram here. And we have a horizontal member, a vertical member, and a second horizontal member. Off of that we had forces here. This is force 2, force 2. We had force 1 and force 1. And finally we had force 3y, force 3x, force 3y and force 3x. And if we looked at the distances separating these items, these, these forces and force couples, we had 1 meter and there was 2 meters over here, 1 meter, 1 meter, and vertically we had three meters. So the distance between force one 
is found by taking that force, extending the tip and the tail, until we can find a spot where we can draw a perpendicular line to the force values that intersects the line of action of both forces. And this is D1. D1 is the same as 1, 2, 3 meters. So 8 times 3 is the first moment couple. The second moment couple is 10 times 3. It's force 2, the magnitude of 10, times the distance between them perpendicular to the line of action is 3 meters. The third one is F3x times 3 meters. So a force going this way and a force going that way, they're separated by a vertical distance of 3 meters. This, the final one is F3y, this one and this one, separated by, oh actually I had, this should be one meter separation between F3y. And if we were to add up this moment resultant, we would find MR point A is simply equal to sixty one point zero seven two kilonewton meters. And that's a positive value. So what does that mean? Well if we go back to our free body diagram here we can say that all of those moments resulted in a moment resultant at A that was positive 61.072 kilonewton meters at location A. Now <clears throat> the question also asks us to determine the force resultants at A. So let's do that very quickly here. And we know that, well let's start a new page for that, we know that Or force resultants we know that the sum of forces in X is equal to our force resultant in X and the sum of forces in Y is equal to our force resultant in Y these are the sum of applied forces not the reaction now let's look at this in detail and we'll bring back our free body diagram to do that, we can see here that if we begin to add up all the forces in X, we have plus F2 minus F2 plus F3X minus F3X, and that's all the forces in X. So that adds up to zero. And if we look at the Y directions, we have plus F1 minus F1 plus F3Y and minus F3Y. And if we add up all the forces applied in the y direction, that also adds up to zero. In other words, coupled forces cancel each other out. And there is no resultant force due to those coupled forces. So we can say that this is simply equal to, if we add up all the values to this, this is equal to plus 10, minus 10, plus plus 3.536 minus 3.536 and that's equal to zero and the same thing in the y direction plus 8 minus 8 plus 3.536 minus 3.536 is equal to zero so therefore moment couples do not produce resultant forces. 
So we can draw our final free body diagram for this object and say that our moment couples produce a, N, or a, a resultant moment of 61.072 kilonewton meters at A. Now, that's the equivalent moment due to the applied loading. Question part B has us find reactions. So we can go ahead and we could start from the beginning with all the applied forces and determine the reactions at A. Or we could start with our equivalent system with the resultant moment of forces from our applied system and find our reactions. And since a resultant system is supposed to give us exactly the same re reactions as our applied system, then either way is perfectly valid. But obviously, applying a resultant moment at A is equal to 61.072 kilonewton meters and determining our reaction forces reaction at A in the y direction reaction at A in the x direction along with our reaction moment at A we can see that this is quite simple so let's determine our force reactions sum of forces in x is equal to zero this is our equilibrium condition. Sum of forces from y is equal to zero, and sum of moments is equal to zero. This is equilibrium. So if sum of forces in x is equal to zero, this means that R A X has to equal zero. There's no applied force in x. Same principle for y. We could say that R A Y is also equal to zero. And if we take sum of moments about location A, set that equal to zero, we could say that the moment reaction at A plus our resultant moment at A is equal to zero. So our reaction moment at A is simply equal to minus 61.072 kilonewton meters or 61.072 kilonewton meters acting clockwise. At that point, we've solved the problem.